This video is not clickbait. You read the title right. We are gonna be testing six of the big brand 400 watt solar panels in this video. The Anchor Solar Panel, Blue Eddy, the Big Blue, EcoFlow, Enor, and All Powers. We're gonna put each one head to head and see which one makes the most power. Now these large format portable panels are expensive, so it's important to know what you get for your money. So in this video, we're gonna break down the peak performance numbers. We're gonna test for partial shading. We're gonna see how long it takes to set up each panel. We're gonna discuss the warranty and waterproof capabilities. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna break down all those results to see which one sticks out as the best bang for your buck. Now, before jumping into the actual testing, this is what it looks like today. It's around 85 degrees. It's a late summer day. We have a bit of haze, but at least there are no clouds. Now, each of the solar panels that we test today, I'll be plugging them into my Anchor Solix F2000 power station. I like this charge controller because it's accurate and very capable. For example, this supports 32 volts all the way up to 60 volts with a 20 amp input limit. So any of the solar panels we test today, we're gonna get max power using this charge controller. So the first panel that we're gonna be testing to see how long it takes to set up is the All Powers 400 watt panel. So let's go ahead and start it. I'm gonna start a stopwatch and see how long it takes. Okay, so that's the panel set up. One minute, 29 seconds to set up the All Powers. Now the All Powers solar panel actually has five panels put together. And this is because this uses polycrystalline instead of monocrystalline. Now coming around to the back, I do like that it has an individual kickstand for each section. This helps the panel be a little bit more sturdy and it does seem to set up fairly straight. Now this panel is advertised to have an ETFE coating, but looking closer, you can see that it's a matte finish that's flat. This reminds me of a older style PET coating, which is not as durable and will actually start to fade and crack earlier than ETFE. The VOC right now is 40.0 volts. Let's go ahead and connect it up to the power station. So with the solar panel connected up, we're getting 306 to 307 watts input. So voltage at max power is 32.6 volts. Now checking the amperage on the main line, we are getting around 12.18 amps. In the next test, I wanna see how this panel performs in partial shading. So I've taken a piece of cardboard and covered up two of the panels. Let's see how much power we're getting now. So here's the All Powers partial shading results. We're still getting 197 watts input. So decent results even under partial shading. Now because the All Powers is rated to be IP67 waterproof, let's go ahead and spray it down. This will also show us how much power we can get if the panel is cool. So I'm just gonna cool it off. We're gonna make sure it can work in the rain and we'll go ahead and check out the power. So let me just get it a little bit cooler here. Solar panels perform better when they're cold, so this will be a good way to cool it down. So now that we've cooled off the panel, you can see we're getting more power now. So around 339 to 337 watts, and it is jumping around a little bit because the water is still on the panel. So the next solar panel that we'll be testing in the video is the Anchor 400 watt solar panel. So I have my stopwatch ready. Let's go ahead and start to see how long this one takes to set up. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop that. So that took 48 seconds to get this set up. Now this is what the Anchor solar panel looks like when it is set up. This does have an ETFE coating. I like how there's no fabric on it. And on the back, you can see there's only three kickstands. So there are four sections, but only three kickstands. So you can see this section right here just is a little bit lower because there's no kickstand on it. So the VOC on the Anchor panel is 51.2 volts. Now I've gone ahead and connected up the Anchor solar panel and we're getting 345 watts. Now checking the voltage under peak load, it's around 40.2 volts. Now checking the amperage of the panel, we are getting 11.25 amps. In the next test, I've gone ahead and put a piece of cardboard covering up two of the panels to test the partial shading performance for the Anchor 400. Let's see how many watts we're getting now. So the Anchor solar panel with the partial shade, we're getting 173 watts. So still decent performance, even covering up two of those panels. So this panel also has an IP68 waterproof rating. So we're gonna spray this one down, make sure it's still functioning properly. We're also gonna see how much power we can get as the panel is cooled down. Cause like I said before, panels get more power as they are cool. So let's just water this down a little bit more. So now that we've cooled off the Anchor solar panel, we're getting 363 watts. So it does work after getting wet and we get more power as it starts to cool down. So 
So the next 400 watt panel we'll be testing is the one from Big Blue. I have my stopwatch ready, so let's go ahead and see how long this one takes to set up. Okay, so it took 56 seconds to set up the Big Blue solar panel. Now this is what the Big Blue solar panel looks like. It's a quad full design. It has an ETFE coating. This also uses monocrystalline cells. And looking at the back, you can see there is a kickstand for each of the se sections of the panel. And it sits quite a bit lower than the others, so this will get really good power in the middle of the summer. So connecting my voltmeter up to the power line, the Big Blue is getting 55.4 volts open circuit. We're getting 275 watts as it's charging the power station. So taking a look at the voltage under peak power, it's 43.7 volts. Now taking a look at the amperage on the main power line, we're getting 6.22 amps. Now I've gone ahead and covered up two of the panels with a piece of cardboard to test the partial shading performance. Let's go ahead and see how many watts we're getting now. So with the big blue solar panel partially shaded, we are getting 157 watts input. So this solar panel also has an IP68 waterproof rating. So we're just gonna wet this down, cool it off, and see how many more watts we can get as the panel is cooled down. So with the big blue solar panel cooled down, we are getting around 303 watts to 304 watts input. Now the next 400 watt panel we're gonna be testing is the Blue Eddy PV420. So it's actually rated for 420 watts. Now I do have my stopwatch ready to go here. So let's go ahead and start that and see how long it takes to set this up. So the Blue Eddy PV420 took 50 seconds to set up. So this is what the Blue Eddy PV420 looks like. It's a quad fold design with an ETFE coating and it does have monocrystalline cells inside. And looking at the back, you have three kickstands that are adjustable and they do a pretty good job holding it straight. VOC of the Blue Eddy PV420, we're getting 40.25 volts. So I just connected the PV420, we're getting 369 watts from the solar panel. So with the Blue Eddy PV420, under peak load, we are getting 33 volts. And on the positive line, we're seeing right around 11 amps of power. Now I've gone ahead and put a piece of cardboard on the PV420 so that we can test the partial shading performance. Let's see how many watts we're getting. So with partial shading, we're getting around 188 watts input with the PV420. Now this solar panel also has a waterproof rating and I'll go ahead and get this thing wet, cool it down, see the peak power that we can get from this solar panel. So I've cooled off the PV420 and now we're getting 397 watts input. So pretty impressive guys. So the next panel that we'll be testing in the video is the EcoFlow 400 watt panel. Now this solar panel does not have kickstands. It is the case that is the kickstand. And you guys are about to witness how hard this thing is to set up with the kickstand. So we'll go ahead and time it, see how long it takes with this kickstand design. Whatever engineer came up with this did never use the panel. Never used it themselves. So that took four minutes and 56 seconds to set this panel up and it's still a little bit high. I'd like to see it lower. It's kind of doing a V thing here. So, I don't know. Let's just see how it goes. Now this is what the 400 watt EcoFlow portable panel looks like. It's a quad fold design. It does have an ETFE coating with no fabric. Now the kickstand itself is the case and you can see it is quite difficult to get it set up and uh, it kind of has a V to it. So we'll see how much power we're getting on this. Now the voltage open circuit for the EcoFlow is 44.6 volts. So connecting the EcoFlow to the power station, we are getting 351 watts charging input. So voltage under peak load is 35.6 volts. Now checking the amperage of the EcoFlow panel, we're getting 10.2 amps. Now I've gone ahead and put a piece of cardboard on two of the panels to test the partial shading performance for the EcoFlow 400. 
Let's see how many watts we're getting on the power station. So partial shading performance with the EcoFlow 400, we're getting 178 watts. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wet down the EcoFlow panel. This is rated to be IP68 waterproof. So we're gonna cool it off and see how much power we can get as the, power, as the actual solar panel is colder. So with the EcoFlow panel connected as we cooled it off, we're getting a little bit more power, 363 watts. Now the next panel that we'll be testing in the video is the Enor 400 watt portable solar panel. Now this is actually the lightest solar panel of the group. So let's go ahead and start my stopwatch and see how long it takes to set up. Okay, one minute and five seconds to set up the Enor 400 watt panel. Now this is what the Enor 400 watt solar panel looks like. It is a quad fold design. I'm not sure if this is ETFE. This is a super smooth reflective surface. I do know that this uses monocrystalline solar panels. And looking at the back here, you can see there are four individual kickstands, one to hold up each section. So it does sit pretty straight. Now I forgot to mention that this has this stiffening rod that goes in the back. So I am adding on to the time frame that this takes. Shouldn't take very long to put this in, but this should add a bit of stiffness to the solar panel, which I like. Never seen a solar panel with um, a stiffening rod like this. It's kind of cool. And there we go. So it just took 30 seconds to add that in. So not bad. So you can see with that stiffening rod in the back, the solar panel sitting much more straight and there's a image of that stiffening rod. It's like an aluminum tent pole almost. VOC of the Enor panel, we're showing 44.8 volts. So with the Enor solar panel connected, we're getting 330 watts charging input. So voltage under peak load, we're getting 36.3 volts. And the amperage for the Enor panel is 9.36 amps. Now I've gone ahead and put a piece of cardboard on two of the panels to test the partial shading performance for the Enor solar panel. Let's see how many watts we're getting on the power station now. So with the partial shading performance, we're getting around 167 watts input with the Enor solar panel. Now this solar panel does have an IP65 water resistance rating, so it's good for splashing. So we're just gonna get it on the front of the panel here. Gonna really cool it down. See if we can get some more power out of this. So after cooling down the panel, we are getting 357 watts from the Enor 400. Okay guys, that was super fun to test each one of those panels. So I've taken all the results and I've put them into this shared spreadsheet. So I'll have a link to this down in the video description. I'll also attach this on a new tab to my power station grading sheet so you guys can check this out anytime. So I have the panels listed here in alphabetical order and I have the price of them. Just remember the price changes all the time. So these numbers might jump around a little bit. So I've broken down the actual performance for each of the tests we've done, including the voltage and amps that we got versus the advertised amount. I have the build quality and the materials. So ETFE versus non ETFE, they all have MC4 connections and most of them use 12 aug wire. The Enor did have 14 gauge wire. So let's go ahead and break down some of this information using some graphs and then we'll come back to the spreadsheet. So in this first graph, we are looking at the solar panels at which one put out the most power. We are not including the price. We're not including the weight or how long it took to set up the panels. So if you want to look at pure power output, this is your graph. So the panel that put out the most power was the Blue Eddy 420. We got 369 watts. Right behind that was the EcoFlow 400 at 351 watts. And then behind that was the Anchor 400 at 345 watts. Now the other three panels didn't do that bad. The Enor, we got 330 watts. All Powers, we got 307. And the Big Blue at 275 watts. Now just keep in mind, these were just during my testing conditions. You could get more or less power than this based on your location. Now in the second graph, I wanna find out which solar panel gives you the best bang for your buck. So if we look at the price and the actual wattage that it puts out, we can get a price per watt number. Now why is this important? Well, some of these panels are very, very expensive. So do you get any extra value by purchasing an expensive solar panel? So if we look at the numbers here, the Enor on the left-hand side came in at the best price per watt ratio, only $1.72 per watt. And that's because it's an affordable panel that puts out a decent amount of power. Now, what about the most expensive panel? Well, the Anchor was the most expensive panel out of the ones we tested, and it produced an okay amount of power, but you'll still spend $2.89 per watt on that panel. 
So if you're looking for the best bang for your buck or value, you're gonna to wanna to stick with a lower price per watt number for your solar panel. Now in the final graph, I wanted to see which solar panel was the most efficient. Now I came about this number by taking the entire square footage of the solar cells of each panel, and then I divided in the wattage to get a watt per square foot. Now if you look at the left side, the Anchor is actually the most efficient panel. It's the smallest panel out of all the panels I tested, and it produced a decent amount of power, so it put out 13.5 watts per square foot. Now the All Powers panel is the largest out of all the solar panels, and it only produced 10.8 watts per square foot. So hopefully this information helps you to understand which solar panel is the most efficient. Now I'm back here at the spreadsheet, I just wanna break down a few other things about the solar panels before ending the video. Just remember this will be down in the video description. So starting with the waterproof ratings on each of these, they all have a waterproof or water resistant rating. Obviously the IP67 and 68 is gonna be better because that means the panel is submersible for 30 minutes, either to a meter depth or a meter and a half. Now what about the warranty on each of these? Well, most of them have a two-year warranty with the exception of the Blue Eddy being one year and the EcoFlow being one year. I would have liked to see a longer warranty period because those panels are fairly expensive. Now, what about the setup times? Now, each of these panels had around a minute to a minute and a half setup time with one outlier being the EcoFlow. It took four minutes and 56 seconds to set that up. And that's because the awkwardness of that kickstand, that's the case. So you have to use these carabiners and kind of get it to balance. And so it just takes a long time to set that up. So keep in mind, it's probably better just to lean this solar panel up against something versus using the actual kickstand. Now, what about the weight of each of these solar panels? The lightest solar panel was the Enor coming in at 21.6 pounds. Now this is fairly flimsy and flexible, but remember it comes with that backer rod that goes in the back of the solar panel to stiffen it up. So I really like that design. Now the heavier solar panels are definitely the all powers. Remember this has five sections using polycrystalline versus the monocrystalline, which is more efficient on the other solar panels. The heaviest solar panel is the EcoFlow. Now it has a really durable design, but it also has that kickstand case that you have to bring along if you wanna use that. So that leads to the extra weight. Now I also included the amount of kickstands per this section of the solar panel. So for example, the All Powers has five stands and five sections, so that's a really sturdy solar panel and it's not gonna have any panel that's kind of leaning down. The EcoFlow, this has one stand and four sections, so you kind of got that V look to it, so they weren't all facing the sun exactly. Now, I also included the folded up dimensions and the deployed dimensions, so you could see that. Now, I also included affiliate links to these products, so if you liked the content and end up purchasing one of these panels, it does support the channel and give me a small commission when you purchase from one of these links, so thank you for supporting the channel. Now, I really enjoy doing these solar panel comparison videos. If you're not quite looking for a 400 watt panel, I have an entire video on 200 watt panels that I'll include down in the video description. Basically went through 11 different options of 200 watt solar panels, so lots to choose from there. Now, if I was going for the most budget friendly solar panel out of these 400 watt options, I'd probably go with the Enor solar panel. If I was gonna go with the best build quality and best warranty, I would choose the Anchor 400 watt solar panel. And if I was just gonna go with the mass output, the one that put out the most power, I'd probably choose the Bluetti PV420. Now you guys have to let me know what you think about these solar panels. Throw a comment down below. Let me know what your results are if you have one of these panels or if you're looking at purchasing one. I'd like to know which one you guys are looking at. Also, if you guys wanna learn more about the Anchor Solix F2000, I have a full review on this power station. I'll also include down in the video description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.